Good afternoon everyone and welcome back. I'm Briare Oskarensky and this video marks yet another first for me. A few months ago I promised two surprises. One was the Valkyria Chronicles 2 art book, the second is the 135th plastic model of the Vulcan, a mecha starring in the excellent Super Famicom game Assault Suite Vulcan, known as Cybernator in the West and the inspiration to LucasArts Metal Warriors. Vulcan is actually the second game in its series, the first being Assault Suite Lanos for the Mega Drive, or Genesis for the North American audience. You can deepen your knowledge about these games at the site provided below. This model is produced by Plum, which in 2010 started producing plastic kits reproducing classical video game designs, starting from the SA-77 Sylphid. Later they introduced the AS5E3 from Lanus. When they announced that the Vulcan would be next, I couldn't resist and pre-ordered the kit right away. Its retail price is a little less than 7300 yen, but online retailers have it for 5000 yen or less. As you can see the box is rather big, almost twice as tall as a Bandai's Gundam High Grade kit. And it's quite heavy too. On the front there is a close-up of a fully assembled and painted Vulcan. If you can make it from the video, the model underwent a light Photoshop filter to make it blend with the background, which, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, uh, it's the original illustration of the Super Famicom game. Jake Ty prefers to the model the game's main character is piloting. The model belongs to Plum's AES series, of which the Vulcan is number 4. The previous three entries are three variations of the Lanos, so if Plum decided that this kit is the player's mecha, it's highly probable that there will be more Vulcans in the future, maybe with a different weapons loadout. Top and bottom sides are essentially the front cover compressed into a smaller space. The right side has some Japanese text, probably cautions, along an illustration and a complete view of the mecha fully painted. And I must say it looks great, though some small details differ between the two. Um, the rifle, torso details, the left arm, proportions, but I can't really complain about this, all of them give the Vulcan a more menacing look and, well, now that I think of it, they make it more similar to the in-game sprite. Left side and there are front and rear views, and, uh, well, the more I see it, the more I like it. The action poses are a bit silly, but at least they show that the model is possible. If the Vulcan is anything like the Lanos, don't expect Master Grade or recent High Grade degrees of mobility, just enough to avoid having it simply standing on a shelf. It must be noted that the number of parts is relatively low, so modifications should be very easy if you want to strike a more extreme pose. But to confirm how the Vulcan really is, the box must be emptied of its contents, so here we go, unbox start! And wow, multiple plastic colors! Uh, the rifle, which is only two halves, polycaps, shoulders, more shoulders, the same as before, torso and shield, Upper legs, lower legs, a twin plate of the previous one, hands and internals, torsos once again, two identical plates for joints.
clear part for the eye, and more polycaps. Besides the manual, nothing else. Typical of Plum, the manual starts off with a simplistic cover recapping everything we've seen so far. A form for ordering missing, lost or damaged parts, and, well, the color guide right at the start with a brief introduction to the game's story. Taking a look at the color guide, you'll need 10, two shades of light and dark grey, two of red, and I think this is for the clear part. Aside from that, there is no indication where colors go, and only the views provided here and around the box will be of any help. Uh, looking at the color palette set in that the photos, I think all colors have a direct counterpart in most modeling color lines found in European modeling shops, so mixing will just be for weathering. Uh, of course, if you want something colored as the game sprite, you need to swap the tan for a dark green, but that's up to you. There are just three pages of instructions, plus a fourth, and a recap of all plates. A quick look and you start with the torso, arms, legs, backpack, and final assembly. A closer look reveals that the torso is a solid block with no articulation for the cockpit, but to be fair, that was a bit complex and way beyond the scope of a kit of this price. Arms don't show any particular surprise, and the elbow is a single joint articulation, so it probably won't bend past 90 degrees. I expect a lot of seam lines, the small shield on the shoulders are two walls, like the hip assembly. There is no indication about glue, but the lanus and the seal fit did add few parts where glue is a must to hold them together. Legs, again a single joint on the knee, and the ankles use a polycap. The toes are a bit of a letdown, just to always put together. The Leno sat them with a joint for some excellent mobility, but they look easy to cut off and modify as required. Head and backpack look pretty straightforward, with most seam lines covered by other pieces, which is a good thing for those unwilling to use putty or sanding paper. The rifle is a major letdown, very simple and just two parts put together. But, I must say, it looks promising. While not as complex as a Bandai Gundam kit, the Vulcan looks well detailed and fun to put together. The simple construction should lend itself to some excellent modifications, so I'm really looking forward to put this together. But, before assembling the kit, let me show you the plates. Starting off with the main torso components, on plate A. Here are the halves for the shoulder pads, the head halves, and everything you need for the brown section of the upper torso. Detailing is thin, and there are no flashes or ejector pins on any visible surface, maybe just on the two main torso parts, 9 and 10, but I think they'll be covered. The attachment there looks particularly nasty, but it should be fine with just some sanding. I think most of the lower legs are on plate B, along with the toes, which I remember are a single piece with no joints, if not at their root. The telling is good, and I'm sure the results will be excellent when put together. Plate C holds the shield, the lower torso, and some of the parts needed for the backpack. The tailing is simple, but very clean. The shield shows light traces of ejector pins in its interior. The 2D plates are for shoulders and part of the arms. Pieces 7 and 8 show some great detailing, but the shoulder pads have light flash lines on their sides. Nothing big, though. Plate E has the upper legs and some details, the ends, and not much to say. Detailing is limited to a few lines here and there. Two F plates complete the internal details, with main feet, unit, and more backpack exhaust ports. This is where I would have expected the highest concentration of details, 
but aside a few pieces there isn't much, especially on the fit parts. The Lainas had some excellent internal fit detailing, but probably the Vulcan beats the previous kit in number of parts. Dark grey plate, plate G, has fingers and various internal details. You can see part of the head here, exhaust ports for the backpack, and I think those are for the hips. As I stated before, the rifle is very simple and plate I has everything you need for it. Design and detailing are good, plus there is a cap for the muzzle. A small round peg rests on the handle, but yeah, I fear there will be a seam line across the old rifle. An in-depth look at the plates left me partially unsatisfied, but the strength of plums make a kit so far has been the final impact, and from the photos around the box looks like I won't be disappointed. Now, I don't really know where I assembled the model, but when I do, expect an update on the beds and goods. Surely it won't be as straightforward as a Bandai kit, but I'm pretty sure it will be a lot of fun to put together. Briarios Kerensky, over and out.